Hello, Shri Matre Nama. Today we have with us Dr. Pallavi, and uh, we'll be asking her a few frequently asked questions on the process of Kalavana. Before that, let me introduce myself. My name is Bhairav Dutt, and I am a Sri Vidya Upasak. And a few lines about Dr. Pallavi. Dr. Pallavi is a medical professional by profession. She is a practicing anesthetist and she is a Sri Vidya Upasak. She has written a number of books and has a website called drpallavikwatra.com. She has got a huge fan following on Facebook and is into various modalities of sadhana. So today we have requested her to speak about this sacred Kalavahana ritual. Uh, so right over to you, Dr. Pallavi. Welcome to this FAQ session. Thank you. Yeah, so not taking much time, I'll straight away jump to the questions which are frequently asked about. Uh, the first very uh, common question which comes across when somebody hears this name, Kala Vahana. So uh, can you tell our viewers what exactly is this sacred Kala Vahana ritual? Yes. So uh, Kala Vahana is a actual activation of the Shakti within us. It is uh, Kala the word kala actually means nature and avahan. Avahan means invoking. So uh, here is a here is a process that comes from the Sri Vidya lineage of uh, Guru Amritananda Ji from Devi Pura, and uh, has been curated in a way that uh, the the concept and the benefit of doing this process is almost equal to doing a nav avaharan puja. Ashnavavar and Sri Yantra Puja, which is actually quite an extensive and elaborate process of six to eight hours. So Guruji has been very compassionate in crystallizing uh, and, uh, you know, curating this uh, process for the urban sadhaks where uh, time is definitely always a issue. And uh, the process involves invoking the various forces of nature or Shakti within our own body. And this is a very unique process because it, it gives a direct perspective to the non-dual Shakti consciousness. That Shakti is not worshipped outside you in a yantra, in a deity or in a form or in an idol. But Shakti is actually invoked inside your own self or your own body and is felt as a living uh, palpable presence. So that's uh, something which is very unique and uh, also represents the Bindu consciousness of, of uh, Sri Vidya or the Atma Vidya basically, where there is nobody else to worship. It is you and only you. Yeah, very informative. Uh, so as you rightly said that in today's world, people are very busy and they don't have much of time. So. A general question which comes is that what are the benefits of participating in the Kalavana ceremony? Okay, so Kalavana is a very beautiful blend for the urban seeker because it's got its uh, it's got its material benefits, it's got its physical benefits to the body, and it's also got its it's also a spiritual process. So it's a very beautiful blending of, if you were to understand it in terms of benefits, I classify it into these three major areas. So in the physical benefits, basically there is a cleansing, balancing and calibration of all your chakras and the energy pathways in your body. So the energy blockages that we experience due to which we are not able to be impactful in the world. We're not able to feel the power feel that empowerment within us. We are not able to create a mark in the outside world. We are not able to feel successful and self-fulfilled. All these things 
along with physical body symptoms of lethargy all the time or you know feeling very uh, not grounded enough in our own body not fully present in our body so and a lot of other health issues are also there like chronic health issues are there people are suffering from cancers from chronic fatigues from osteoarthritis and stuff many many things so a physically rejuvenating process altogether because the entire uh, prana shakti and the movement of energy across the various nadis of your body is activated through this process so everything basically all your physical issues like migraines like frail frail origin some people are very weak and you know they get tired easily they have diseases so all this gets the physical resetting happens with the with the calibrated and balanced chakras and the flow of energy so those are the physical benefits of this process then if you were to speak about spiritual benefits then i'd say that it's so much of a self love ceremony you know like if you're doing it to yourself we 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 fail to feel our own bodies we fail to touch ourselves you know we fail to feel the communion with ourselves with our innermost feelings and a consciousness shift of that the fact that shakti is not outside us but we are it and the rejoicing in that uh, in that uh, understanding in that perception that's a total shift of consciousness because most of us are used to worshiping shakti outside so it's a spirit yeah. awakening it's a it's a it's a loud awakening to understand that it's with it's me only and a lot of self touching and a self lot of self love self adoration so it gives you high self esteem and you're more confident in the way that you walk into the world and you know like do your things in the world so that's like the spiritual benefits and then you have the uh, material benefits so the material benefits uh, is very simple actually because if you are if you are flowing within yourself then everything that you touch or do in the world is going to be impactful is going to be worthwhile is going to make a difference to yourself and others the lives that you touch so basically if you clean clear and flowing then everything is sorted for you in your life it's effortless so that's how you could be professionally be able to impact in your careers you could be as a student have great memory uh, one of the benefits of this process is having very sharp memory and uh, concentration skills so for students it's very good then for couples it's wonderful because uh, they can actually bond together they can have more deeper levels of intimacy with each other spend more time doing the ritual together feel more close so uh, these and then obviously there's wealth and there's abundance and there's a feeling there's a generic feeling of feeling very auspicious about your life whatever your profession is whatever you do that's really irrelevant so these are the three ways that the uh, the process can actually benefit you wonderful very uh, nicely put up uh, so uh, if one decides to go for the sacred ceremony what uh, would be the steps which are involved in it okay so the whole ceremony is divided into three steps the first step is the cleansing part it's something like you could you could be uh, having this ceremony analogous to a guest visiting your house a very important guest coming to your house so when you know that a guest is coming to your house what do you actually do you start clearing up the space you start making your house look very wonderful beautifully yeah. everything is placed appropriately in the right places and sectors and it's clean most importantly you have a clean place where you ask your you welcome your guests so the first part of the ceremony is the cleansing part so our body has chakras which are energy centers and they tend to get blurry and they tend to get clogged up and we have blockages so we need to clean our chakras first of all before we start to invoke anything or get anything on to us we need to be a clean slate for that so the first yeah. part of the process is got to do a lot with cleansing as well as invocation of 
various protective forces like gods and the kalas. Why is it called kalas? Because there are kalas. If kalas are protective beings, forces, and gods that are going to be invoked into our body for the balancing, for the auspiciousness of the chakras. So the, the first part is basically cleansing and preparation of your body to receive Shakti. The second part is the process of energization of prana pratishtha. So there are many things we see in the material universe, which are very beautiful, but they are just like a plastic flower. They don't have an essence. They don't have a fragrance. So supposing you're very clean now, but then what about it? What after that? Because if you want to, in, until the there is a living essence to you, then even, even you must have heard of the word prana pratishtha when you actually have idols and temples or you go and buy Sri Yantras or anything, which you want it to be a very living reality. So in this case, your body is the living reality, which you want it to be uh, pratishtha or energize. So the second step is about actually doing your prana pratishtha so that the real Shakti Kundalini is activated in your system. And then you have the third step. The third step is a celebration because now you have cleaned, you have, you have had the prana pratishtha and now it's just time to celebrate life, celebrate yourself. So what will you celebrate yourself as? You are the communion of the Shiva Shakti principle now. So you will adore Shiva and Shakti through the chantings of uh, uh, Khadagmala Stotram and Guru Namavali, which are actually adorations to Shiva Shakti. So you just celebrate. So these are the three parts. First part is the cleaning and preparation. Second part is the Prana Pratishta. And the third is the celebration. Are there also some basic steps in which I need to prepare myself if I want to participate uh, in this ceremony? Yeah, there are some basic steps in terms of your energy preparation, in, your, in terms of your body preparation, and in terms of some materials that are needed for you to participate. There are three things that you need to ready yourself for. So first is your energy preparation. So a wonderful way to prepare your energy for this process would be to do some cleansing rituals, like taking a salt water bath before the ritual, you know, and also uh, having a good night's rest, you know, feeling very relaxed with yourself, having an ambient, silent space and time for yourself where you're going to, you're not going to worry about the next day work. But you have all the time and you can go slow and assimilate, absorb and feel. So that's all that you need for, uh, in terms of your energy preparation. In terms of your physical preparation, it would be good, as I said, to have salt water bath before the ceremony. You feel very relaxed in some very loose, loose clothing, which is comfortable to you, cotton wear. And you have an undisturbed space where you can sit for the next uh, 40 odd minutes to do the ceremony to yourself and a private space that's what i mean and uh, also physically it would be much better if you not eat anything for three to four hours before the ceremony because there could be some amount of kundalini rising and you know some things like with a heavy stomach it get it could get uh, uncomfortable so that's the physical preparation and uh, third is the things or materials that are needed so Let's keep it very low profile in terms of its ritualistic need because here we are trying to uh, really have a non-dual process and we don't want to get more uh, cluttered with the demands of a formal ritual. So the basic three things are needed. One is you need a Sri Yantra. One is you need a little red kumkum to do some ceremony and you need a tea light candle or a diya or a, or a lamp or whatever. So that's just the basic preparations that are needed. Other than that, there can be no end to the dearth in which we can celebrate Shakti. So you can have uh, Naivedyam, you can have food articles, you can have uh, incenses, you can have flowers, decorations, ornaments, lavish saris, anything basically. You're just celebrating uh, her. So uh, it could be anything. There's no end to that. But if you were to ask the basics, so this is what you need. 
right so uh dr pallavi if i ask you as a layman that what are uh, the chak what are chakras basically and how does uh, kalavana help me clean and balance and uh, in a way align these chakras so what exactly as a layman uh, would you like me to explain that what are these chakras yes so in the eastern as well as in the western tradition now i think there are very few of us who have not heard the word ever before because the word is commonly being used by in all the spiritual communities so chakras are basically spinning wheels of energy so in our our body is basically an energy mechanism in place where we have a dense network of nadis and you know energy centers and meridians so we have basically many chakras but basically the most important chakras there are seven chakras in our body and it starts from the muladhara and goes up to the crown chakra so these are the seven basic chakras you have muladhara you have swadhisthana you have manipura then you have anahata and then you have vishuddhi and agna and crown chakra or the uh, uh, crown chakra right so there are seven chakras these are the primary uh, energy points in the body and now the the question that's being asked is that how could kala vahana help me in cleansing these chakras or working with these chakras so it's very beautiful and that our sanskrit our sanskrit consonants there are 51 matrukas okay in the in the literature there are 51 consonants and in these seven chakras if you would have seen their pictures each chakra has actually got its own petals also for example muladhara has got muladhara chakra has got four petals like that vishuddhi chakra has got 16 petals anahata has got 12 petals so the total number of petals in the seven chakras is also 51 and the total number of uh, vowels and consonants is also 51 the matrukas so in this kalavahana process what we are going to do is that we are going to be opening each chakra petal through the activation of these bija bijas we will be intoning them so that not only the chakra per se but each and every petal is actually cleansed and prepared and then ready to receive and if there's any energy blockage in the entire system then that is smoothened out creased out so that's how kalavahana helps in we use the matruka system to actually cleanse activate balance all the chakras wow that uh, sounds very amazing uh, so uh, if i go through this kala vahana ceremony how is it going to help me with my current life situations it's okay like my chakras will be clean and uh, rejuvenated how will it impact my life as a whole what we should understand is that we should not have very short term visions or goals that we want to achieve we should be ready to do the inner work and lay a baseline foundation for us to be holistic in how we feel within ourselves once we feel empowered once we feel that self esteem within us then whatever stream we may be in or whatever stage of life we may be in we will never have the doubt and conflict in our head we will always walk out fearlessly and with flow into the world and when we do this then whatever we do is going to be definitely impactful and appropriate so if you're a student you may find yourself excelling in your studies if you're somebody who is into business and wants to have more wealth in terms of material abundance then you're going to have some more creative visualizations of how you should grow your business if you're an artist if you're in like a if you're like a musician or you work with creative arts like paintings or you know like you you put in touch with yourself with your inner self then you will have more uh more manifestive visions of how you should uh you know bring out the body of work that that's lying dormant within you so uh, and if you're a person who's more lazy at all times or feels lack of energy then you'll have a more dynamic outflow of energy and you'll do things and you'll be like more participative in your life in all areas so definitely everything that you do is going to be touched and going to be transformed there's no one way to do it it may just be very different for different people 
Yeah. So, uh, uh, Dr. Pallavi, in case uh, I am doing this ceremony and uh, suppose uh, I am being guided, so uh, how can I do this on my own body uh, in a session like this? If it's a Zoom session, how I can do it on my own body? Okay. So, there are two ways in which Kalavahana is done. One is that there is a person who gives the, offers the process and there's a recipient in the process. That's, that's one way of doing it. And uh, that is generally a physical process where uh, the person who's giving is actually touching the body parts and the chakras and, you know, placing the hands on various positions and also doing a complete uh, anointing ceremony to the recipient, a complete bath a bathing ritual, and then lots of abhishekams are done. So that's one way of doing it. But since we are in different parts of the world and it's not possible to come together for a physical ceremony, but why should we be deprived of feeling the auspiciousness? So that's why I thought that a Zoom session could also be wonderful because ultimately what are we? We are energies and energy is traveling through space and time. So why should we be reliant on a physical process? So yeah. in, a, in a Zoom process, it's going to work it out, work out like this, that I'm going to be giving a step-by-step -step instruction to you when you're participating. For example, I'm going to say, now place your hands on the Anahata Chakra. So you're going to do that. You're just going to follow my instructions of placing your hands on various parts of your body. And the rest of the in, intonations and the mantras and the hymns and everything are going to be sung by me on your behalf. So you have to be very relaxed and you can just enjoy going into, slipping into the process. Just remember to follow that one instruction where I tell you to place your hands where you have to. Because this is a lot of touch body work where you are in an intimate connection with yourself. It's not something out in some other realm. It's right here and you know your body, your palpable body is participating in it. So I'll be just telling you to place your hands certain places or doing a certain few things. But other than that, I'm going to be more active person and doing the, the chantings and everything on your behalf. So that's how the process will work. And how much time uh, does this take? Uh, this is expected to take around 30 to 40 minutes because uh, it takes... Uh, the idea is not just rushing through it. The idea is to celebrate and to enjoy it and to go smoothly and enjoy the process. So there's no hastening to it. There's no fast flow to it. Actually, if I, I, I remember when I used to do it to myself, it took me just 20, 25 minutes some days. But then I, I was really quick about it. It was many days. It was just ritualistic for me to complete it. But when I want to offer it to you on a Zoom session, I want it to be just remembered as a, have, you must have a very fond memory and recalling of how beautiful it was. So I wouldn't like to go very fast with it. That's why a 30 to 40 minute slot would be needed. Okay. And uh, what would be the articles or preparation which I would need if I wish to participate in the ceremony? Yeah, I've told that before. You just need three things. Uh, you need to bring yourself in. That's the most important and then yeah, yeah. to have your Shri Yantra, your Kum Kum, and your Diya or Tea Light can. Other than that, you can get any offerings that you want to offer to yourself. If you love any kind of special sweet, do get it and offer it to yourself. And so any any particular flower you like, any particular essence you like, anything can be brought on. But the basics are only just these three. Well, it's sounding very simple as you are uh, talking about it. So, uh, uh, there is a general, uh, what you can say, a conception amongst uh, the people that if uh, someone is not uh, initiated into Shri Vidya, uh, will he still be qualified for this ceremony, for participation in this ceremony? The fact that we got born into the world without the initiation of Shri Vidya, we didn't check. Nobody checked our qualification then, no? Then what is the point of checking the qualification right now? And anyway, it's just being a recipient. So it doesn't really matter at all. The only thing, the only qualification you need is to adore Shakti and to love her and to have that longing to learn, to know, to experience, to feel. 
So if you have that, that much is enough. No formal initiation is needed for this process. Wonderful. So uh, say, suppose I have a partner with me. So, uh, and uh, if we are doing this Zoom guided session, so can I do this ritual on my partner while we are attending this uh, session? Now, that's a very, very interesting aspect that you brought on. Because this is the most uh, beautiful way to adore your partner. That's what I feel. It's the most, it's the best way to convey your respect, your love, your feelings. And it's the most intimate way to feel bonded with your partner. So definitely, I encourage you to get your partner along with you in the Zoom session. And there can be the the way that if you have if you're coming with a partner the way that this session goes is that when i give you an instruction to place your hands on chakras then rather than placing it on your chakras you actually do the whole process to your partner so definitely it's more worthwhile to have to be coming as a one plus one and use the opportunity to uh, feel the bonding that and the joy of togetherness and communion that you may feel during this process. Right. So uh, while I uh, undertake this ceremony, what can be my experiences? Or in fact, I'll put it in this way that what can I expect of this ceremony? So this is like going into the black hole where you don't know what what it's going to plunge forth at you. So Shakti is in, in the Leela, basically. She is never predictable. And therefore, every moment of this ritual is unpredictable. I'd say that. So, but if you have an, in, you, you have like a fear of what may happen to you or you have an inquisitiveness, then I may just suggest that you can have a myriad ways in which you experience this ritual. You could have physical symptoms like uh, a kundalini rising through these uh, mantras and through these uh, connotations could happen and that could throw you into some kind of uh, involuntary movements. You could have a lot of drooling of saliva. You could have trances and blissed out states basically. So don't worry about it. All this is happening as a part. You just need to let go, immerse and slip into the process. You don't need to have too much of mind here. So you could also feel very sexually aroused because arousal is not something that is something to be ashamed of. It's a part of the bliss journey of your body. So just allow that to happen if it does. And you could have deep meditative uh, experiences like out-of-body experiences you could have visions from your past lives. You could have creative visualizations for how to undertake future projects or anything that you need. You, you know, you've been wanting to solve for so long and you didn't know how to crack the code. So the code could just crack for you in some moment in a snap for you. And uh, <clears throat> definitely you could feel a lot of calm, uh, serene energy, the auspicious principle of Shakti. And uh, the feeling that, you know, the, that satiety feeling of ha having no more to make you feel fulfilled. That, that idea of that fact that now my life is complete. I don't need anything or anyone to, as, a, as, a, as a counterpart for me to feel wholesome. So that spiritual awakening of being very complete and satiated within, of being fe feeling very empowered within all these shifts of consciousness can happen. So it the process will bring around different experiences for different people, depending upon their preparation, their longing, and their openness to receive. So it's not a predictable set of experiences I can give you that when you're going through this, you're going to experience one, two, three, tick, tick, tick. It's not happening like that. You'll have to be just open, very open to what's coming your way. Fine. And if I uh, do intend to learn the ritual process to do sadhana for myself, uh, can I do that also? Yes. Uh, there is this unique course on my website called the DIY Kalavahana course. It's called Do It Yourself Kalavahana. So that uh, there's no need of relying on me to do these sessions for you. 
you can just uh, undertake the course and every day you can you can do a sadhana cycle of 3 7 21 40 90 or 108 days where you use the guided step by step videos in this in this course and you you're not reliant going to any place or going to any person to get yourself revered and self pampered so just play on the video and just go on pampering and loving yourself and anointing yourself with love and celebration you just need to take that course and it's for lifetime you can replay it as many times there's no limit to it so that's how you get empowered you learn the thing and you work with it every day wow that's really wonderful empowerment i think is the key which uh, one should be aspiring for. yes so uh, another question is how does this ritual will help me bond and enjoy a deeper intimacy with my own partner okay so this is a wonderful way as i said or the best way to adore your partner to show your respect to show your love so if you have a partner who's vibing at the same level as you who's able to understand what this process has to offer then uh, spending some time to do this to each other or sometimes one on one or sometimes if there's lesser time uh, one can do to the other that would be a wonderful slotted time first of all aajkal for all the modern partners people hardly meet each other even in their staying in their own homes so it's like a hit and run you just talk to the point and then you dissociate and sorry to say but the sexual act is also very very need based and very mechanical step wise 1 2 3 and off to bed because next day is work so that's how we treat our sexual intimacy with our partner it becomes very stereotypical and it becomes very uh, culted in a way over a period of years that we spend with them there's no spice in it there's no respect in it it's just like a bodily need having uh, experienced and finished but here is a place where you will devote or slot out a certain amount of time because this process is going to take some dedicated time and private presence so you'll have to devote a certain slotted time for this where you and your partner are going to be together undisturbed that's one thing and there's no race of going anywhere out or doing anything else so that time allotment and offering your presence to the other person in today's time is what is the best that we can do after that definitely the process helps you in bonding because there's i feel that the the intimacy between two people is not just about engaging in the sexual act or an intercourse it's a lot about honoring touching loving fondling invoking you know celebrating together so but most of the couples now have forgotten just to even touch each other like a loving touch or like a loving pat on the shoulder also a very reassuring thing or placing uh, the mere act of placing your hands on the heart chakra of your partner would be absolutely overwhelming for them because they're not used to they've never experienced what it is for you to place hands get get themselves touched in the heart the sexual act is happening but who's touching who's touching the person's heart nobody is nobody's got the time for it nobody's got the awareness for it but in this ritual there is a step wise lot of touch sensation very smooth flow slowly so it's more like an erotic opening it's like a foreplay which is more celebratory and auspicious so you will get lot of time to do bonding with each other before you actually want to land up together this is second thing and another way that this ritual helps is that we do have our emotional and point of view differences with our partner definitely no no two people are the same and so there's a lot of inner conflict that keeps boiling up inside us which we may not relate to our partner but in this time when you are adoring your partner when you're literally worshiping your partner as shiva shakti then you can't see a fault in your partner at that time at least for those few moments or that time during the ritual yeah. for for that time he's like the world for you and that is what makes you makes him feel so special makes you feel so special 
and therefore the bond is really very deep if you can do the ritual at least a couple of times in a month together then i think it's absolutely amazing it will definitely change the chemistry of your uh, life in many ways not only in your bed but also everything that you do together there'll be a lot of camaraderie understanding and respect for your partner when you have engaged in this process together wow so uh, is it a sexual process or uh, a tantric process yes definitely it is a tantric process because it comes from the shri vidya lineage mm -hmm. but it is not a sexual process there is a capacity i would say a potential of feeling erotically blissed during the process that's what i'd feel or 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 having a more deeper understanding and perception of your own sexuality and of understanding desire better all these things can happen but essentially this is a non sexual process it's a very clean process it's a very pure process it's a very sattvic process so uh, it can be done by both the sexes or uh, only uh, females are qualified for it if you have a chakra in your body then it doesn't matter whether you're a man or woman and uh, you have the consciousness principle inside you and that is that shakti is all prevailing and she doesn't really care whether you're man or woman so definitely the process also is eligible for all the same yes yes sir uh, very rightly put up because energy is same either uh, you are a male or female it doesn't differentiate between uh, doesn't have a gender uh, differentiation very nicely put up so uh, i think uh, we have got very detailed uh, insights about the process of kala vahana which will help our uh, viewers to understand this uh, beautiful and a sacred process uh thanks a lot thank you for your time dr pallavi and uh, thanks to all our viewers thank you thank you bhairav ji for this time and these uh, set of leading questions that will help many more to understand and uh, absorb and receive this process because uh, we had to do this session because these commonly asked questions are something that need to be addressed and it's not possible to text them or speak them in words so a video faq or a video or question answer session is the best way of putting it out there and for all those who want to experience kala vahana there are three ways of doing it one is that you can take up the diy e course on my website and work with the course yourself in your own space time the second is to attend workshops uh, where i will be offering these sessions to you on zoom in a group so if 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 they will have a designated time and uh, a date on which it will be announced and all the people who enroll will be coming on to that zoom session and i will be doing a guided session and each of you will be doing it in the in your own home on yourself that's the second way of experiencing kala vahana and the third way of experiencing kala vahana is the vip kala vahana where you can book a personal session with me and it will be just you and me and if you have a partner then it's going to be you your partner and me just the three of us so it's going to be like a one on one session by me for you so if you have a special occasion like a anniversary or a birthday of your partner or any occasion where you want to just bond together feel more close to your partner feel more revered yourself then you can book these person sessions as well so these are the three ways that kala vahana can be experienced and you must take up one of these opportunities to start with to have a taste of what it is so that you can immerse into it further thank you very much for this session and for this time thank you shri matre namo thank you shri matre namo